Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome along to day one slash part one of our Lamashaw 2023 coverage right here at the NEC in Birmingham. We've got lots for you to get through and what better place to start than on the KSIH stand with this new beast, the new Puma 260. So to tell us all about it, we've got Mr. Ross McDonald from uh, KSIH. Morning James. So first things first Ross, kind of where does it sort of sit in the family especially in relation to the Puma range and the Optum range as well? Um, so we've got our long wheelbase 185 to 240 that we've had for a long time now. Right. Um, Optum is still 250, 270, 300. Maybe something else to come in the future. All right. Um, Watch so this, this space, eh? This is slotting in at the top of our long wheelbase. Um, of the long wheelbase Puma. Of the long right. wheelbase Puma. So 260. We know case H, we put our rated minimum horsepower on the bonnet, but this is max horsepower. I was going to say, you always go conservative, conservative, don't you? You guarantee to get this when it comes it. to horsepower That's wise. It. Yeah. So 280 is our max rated horsepower, and with right. our boost, um, we're up to a little over 300 horsepower. All right, on so this it's model. packing a punch then. Yep. Right. Yep. So we've got our variable geometry turbo in here, bigger cooling pack. Um, so we've got more power um, on this on this unit from the Optum last year that we that we spoke about um, probably about this time last year. It was, year, yeah. Um, we've got that Optum cab. Yeah. So that has now transferred down onto this new long wheelbase. Um, so it's about eight percent bigger than our previous. Um, we've also taken the opportunity on this um, to put an option of some heavier duty axles. Right. So if we want a bigger footprint. So our 650, 85, 38, or on this one, a 710, 70R, uh, 42. Yeah. We've got that taller tyre now, the Group 48. Right. Um, available on the 220, you say that's an optional when it comes to the axles? On the 260, it's absolutely standard. Oh, standard on this, but right. on the 240, 220, right, got you. we can put it on there if we right. need a, a bigger tyre. And around the front end, is the axle different on this? Um, so yeah, this is, a, this is a different front axle on this now. So this is what we call our class. 4.5 right. which and is this what we would see on nothing. the on the optum this axle? no no so right. the optum because the optum's got a integrated sump yeah the suspension hangs from the back on that saddle right. suspension so we have got it's a heavier duty front axle we've got new accumulators new software on here um, so all the suspension is completely updated on the cab side we've got hydraulic suspension or we've got something that we're calling active so we've put some sensors potentiometers back front front linkage rear linkage yeah so all four parts are talking to each other so on the road with mounted implements it's very very right smooth, so it's a bit more predictive rather than reactive by yeah. the time it gets to you in the seat that's it right that's it so yeah it's completely transformed connectivity is another massive part yeah well, we this is where the, the optum, afs connect comes that's into play. it so a new display um we can connect it remotely software update remotely um, we've got our AFS Connect telematics as standard, yeah. so we're managing all of our field data and machine data. So everything um, that we saw on that Optum last year, that is now, over. Yeah. this is in here, you know, yeah. visually and what's underneath as yeah. well. Yeah. Right. So we've been looking for a, a, an updated cabin on the long wheelbase, uh, we've got it, it's bigger. Yeah. It's much quieter, quietest on the market, about 65, 66 right. decibels. And in terms of you know the oily bits, engine-wise, I presume it's still the 6.7 litre? Still the 6.7 FPT. Um, yeah, nothing's changed there, really, stage yeah. five. I say the only difference b jumping into the 260 from previous is we've got the variable geometry um, turbo in there. Right. Um, giving us a bit more oomph. Got you. And swinging off the uh, back of the engine, I would imagine it's CVX only in this, is it? CVX drive only, good point. Yeah, so our 240, 260 are going to remain as as that stepless transmission right. um, on here. Got you. Um, hydraulics on the back have all been upgraded, so we have uh, we can reconfigure them on the, on the LED paddles. Yeah. Pressure release valves on there. Um, so no, lots and lots of changes um, on this so no it's nice to get it out there all the good stuff well ross thank you very much for your time pleasure as ever and we look forward to seeing this in the field yeah thanks james perfect have a good show right ladies and gents on to the bed now stand now and i'm joined by mr warren rivers scott who is going to talk us through two new key products 
Starting with this one. Uh, this is a Swifter disc. It's a disc cultivator, a short disc cultivator. However, uh, this is slightly ahead of the game. This is uh, a, a very advanced machine. This is our Profi version. Uh, apart from it being 12.4 meters, so ideal for those CTF guys, uh, it has the X configuration of the disc layout, so it means that it will pull very square behind the tractor. So the front half of the discs are one-handed, the other front half are the opposite-handed and vice versa on the rear. This machine is completely controlled by Isobus. Uh, so on an Isobus tractor we plug and play, it'll come up on the screen. Uh, so what that means is that uh, it gives us uh, several functions. Some of the main functions, of course, of, of folding out, depth control, etc., is all done uh, electro-hydraulically through the ISOBUS system. One of the key things for this machine is, from an operator's perspective, this is super easy. So it will automatically, if you've got section control on your tractor, uh, this will automatically lift up on the headland boundary and drop back into work again when you've turned around. But likewise, with the uh, uh, with, with a prescription mapping as well, similar similar thinking with the with a variable rate from your seeding or from your from your uh, spraying perspective, uh, we can alter the depth of this on the move automatically with a prescription map right. set up from the farm office. So from a from a fuel saving aspect, yeah. if you know that one part of the field is heavy and we need to be in just that little bit deeper to, to work a little bit harder, um, and then the other side of the field, it's, it's, it's very silty, very yeah. sandy, we don't need to be in that deep, we don't need to be burning all that fuel to try and get the job done, uh, it'll automatically shallow off as long as that prescription has been set oh, up. Right. So quite an advanced machine, but this isn't our biggest. Right. We do bigger. <laughs> so this, this is our mid-size. This is the mid-size mid mid range, right. Yeah. So uh, our largest actually is 18.4 metres. Uh, we have had some inquiries for the UK. We have yeah. yet to, to place one in the UK, but 12.4 uh, is so, of course the most common. You know, common. with these combine headers, that's where it's going though, isn't it? That's Absolutely. That's the direction it's headed. Yes, for sure. So far with, with six metres and larger, we have now a 10.01% market share in the UK. They didn't see that coming, did they? No. You just snuck in here. Under the radar. We'll have that. <laughs> right, Warren. Product number two, what is this yellow beast? So this is the strip master. This is a, a strip tillage, strip cultivator, um, various various names for it uh, as how people would recognize it. The way that this is set up in this disguise is with uh, a slurry applicator. So it's got a macerator up on top um, and then that's pumping uh, slurry down to two different variable depths uh, at, at the rear through, uh, through galvanized shoes. So we have our opening disc at the front, uh, we've got depth wheels, we've got cleaning, cleaning wheels there, star wheels to make sure that there's no trash. Um, and then we have our leg to go through the, the, the subsoil um, and then these discs to help contain that material. So basically we, we end up with a cultivated strip uh, of only uh, a few inches wide and then an untouched strip. And, and so on. Right. So, so the the idea of this particular machine, the way the, this is a, this is already sold, uh, but the way that this has been been set up is for a maize grower. He's he's got a, an AD plant, and what he wants to do is to be able to uh, in the spring, as soon as he can start travelling on the fields, start uh, injecting his slurry, uh, maybe two or three passes mm. into the same slots every time. Yeah. Map that out, and then what will happen is that he then has some some very fertile uh, strips, which is a very nice tilth, and he can go straight in with his maize drill. Right. So what he'll end up with is still some organic material growing in between, um, uh, which will which will prevent soil erosion and, and help to protect the maize as it starts to grow. Yep. Um, and and it, so he's getting rid of rid of his digestate. He's creating a tilth, reducing his cultivation passes, uh, and getting on to, to get that maize drilled sooner because the ground dries out and warms up faster. Absolutely. And in terms of your raw widths, I, I see they're sort of bolted onto a frame there. It's adjustable, can you yes. alter those as well? We can, yes. We have a staggered system as well, so we can come, come much more narrow. The machine ends up being a little bit longer, but yes, we... So you go for we, a two raw, so it's... Yes. Right. Yeah, almost like drill coulters, so yeah. to, to get the space. Right, Warren, as ever, thank you very much thank for your you. time. That has been absolutely spot on. Super. We will catch you again thank shortly. You. Super, thank you. We 
are now over here on the Agrifax stand and we are here to see the new Condor Vanguard sprayer. Now the man that is going to show us or introduce us to the new Vanguard is Matt Roost and he's standing here next to me. He's the product demonstrator and installer for this machine. Matt, tell us a little bit about it. So it's, um, it's our new 6,000 litre machine. Uh, it was launched by the factory back in November. Um, this is its first UK appearance as such. Um, we've had two pre-production models in the UK since the middle of last year. Uh, so we've got this one, which is a 48 metre machine, and we've got a 36 metre machine in Scotland. Right. Um, now, is this a pre-production machine here? The pre-production machine, yeah. So the factory's been very good at sort of coming over when they needed to, um, and, and they've been looking after it really well, looking at bits to improve and, and stuff like that. So it's been, it's been, it's been successful. So tell us why the Vanguard? Why the Vanguard? What, what does the Vanguard bring in the Condor range? Tell me about that. So the biggest thing is uh, being a 6,000 litre tank. So yeah. we've, we do a four, a five, and an eight. So the 6,000, it just fills that gap in that we've, we've not had already. Right. Um, another thing is, is it covers uh, EU regulations. So in a, uh, certain EU countries, um, the Condor, with it being a wider machine, the widest part is the booms. It can be, um, uh, it's too wide for their roads. So, oh, so you're saying to, now then, this is three metre width, so it can go faster? Yep, so it's, it's not restricted because um, it fits in the, the, those EU regulations of the... So the France is, um, the Condor in France is 25 kph. It's now, limited to This 25. is now 50 kph. Legal, legally you can go 50 kph. That's awesome, yeah. that's brilliant. Um, obviously over here it can go 50k as well. So, so in terms of technology, this brings you everything to the table that you're going to get with the regular Condor yeah, anyway? Yeah, so it's identical to, so we can get all the, te the same technology. Um, so we've got a, a class cab. Um, so this cab and the, the running systems are identical to Condor 5. The drivetrain is exactly the same. The chassis is exactly the same, just a little bit longer. Right. Um, the induction and filling up process is exactly the same. Um, we just use a centrifugal pump instead of a diaphragm pump. Right. But we use a centrifugal on our endurance, which is our 8,000 litre machine. Well, there is one different thing that we do need to talk about, is the fact that this has no longer got an FPT engine. It's now got a... Cummins, Cummins engine in yep. it, isn't it? Yep, so we've moved to Cummins on the Condor 5 uh, and Endurance 2, so that was about 2019, 2020. Right. Um, very simply because they put a Cummins, uh, 400 horsepower Cummins into the um, Endurance 2. Right. Um, very much a case of just streamlined the engines and, and, and stuck with the Cummins into the into the, the Condor as well. It's and been a very successful engine. In tier 5? Tier 5, yeah. Same transmission as before? Or is it an upgraded transmission? Or is any differences in the transmission, the running gear? Uh, the running gear, uh, is, I think, is pretty much the same. We're on a heavy duty drive line now, whereas it used to be an option. It's now standard. Oh, sorry, it's it's standard it's on this model? Right? Standard is a heavy duty on all our models now. Um, in terms of tyre size and tyre spec then, because does that mean you can get bigger wheels? on the heavy duty axles I mean what's the deal there um, it's uh, basically it's just got a bit more it's got that bigger horsepower it's just got that bit more sort of go basically right, so right, right, right. Um, for the market of going up hills but that's like we, what we've got over here it's um, the heavy duty we we'll, we'll get at them so what horsepower is this one so it's about 288 288 horsepower yeah, so same engine in this as a Condor 5 so it's, it's a pretty impressive machine isn't it Matt thank you so much Not a problem. for chatting to me mate it's no, been an no absolute problem. pleasure and uh, have a great lama yeah and you that's <laughs> lovely cheers It's now time to finally see this uh, Fence 700 Series Gen 7 tractor in the flesh. And we've seen it before, it's Mr. Peter Henson. He's going to talk us all about it. Yeah. So, Peter, you'll have gathered I'm slightly giddy about this because I've, <laughs> I've been dying to see this ever since you, yeah, la you launched it in German land. Yeah, we, so, yeah. now it's here at Lama, we can have a good yeah, look at it yeah, and yeah. see what the crack is. So, firstly, where does it sit in the family? Because, correct me if I'm wrong, you've still got your Gen 6 700s. Yeah, yeah. The current 800 series is still it's kicking still around with us, still with us, for now, still but with us. this kind of what's yeah. happening. What's so, happening? So, so, effectively, at the moment, if we if we had a Gen 6 700 and we had an 800, this stature-wise sits right in the middle. It will just gradually go yeah. up. This would be in between. Yeah. So, slightly bigger than the, than the Gen 6, slightly smaller than an 800 series. With these ones, then we start at the 720. 
722, 724, and then we get the 726, 728 there. Right, so, so there is a little bit of there's, overlap there's with o the Gen o 6. overlap with the Gen 6, and obviously big overlap with the, with the 800. Yeah. In essence, is this, this ticks the boxes, really, for the, for the guys where they've got a, a 724, but they just want a, a, bit, a bit more. They want something that's physically a little bit bigger, yeah. but the, the step into an 800... And it's, is, 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 it's too far. It's too far. Yeah. So this this really does bridge the gap between the two. Right. Um, essentially, though, for us is this it will end up replacing the S4 800 as we know it. As we know it. Right. Um, so. And do you think at some point the 800 might come back, but it will have grown up? Yeah. 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 That's because because what's because because is is affected is because um, we got the we got the seven two eight there and over that yeah. side there's we got a, a nine three six. Right. But of course, then it's, it'd be too big a jump to go from a a seven two eight up to a nine thirty. Yeah. So there's going to have to be something in between. So it's to, not the to, end of the eight hundred. It's not the, yeah. not the eight hundred. Right. End of it'll be the end of the S four eight hundred. Yeah. But what the Germans will come up with, we'll, right. we'll see in the fullness of time. Cool stuff. Right, so go on, hit me with some technical detail. So, Let's start at the front. Let's so, go at the front. So at the, at the front then is, um, we've got, uh, got an all new Agco Parage, so the core 75 engine. So this, is, this has been you know, uh, seven years in the, uh, in the development with this new engine. So it's a less complex engine. Uh, in there is designed what, so, the, compared to the Deutz? So, yeah, right. compared to, because because it, where where it loses the complexity is, is because it's been designed to be a stage five engine from the get go. Right. So it's not with some of the engines where you just keep adding yeah, on yeah. extra bits and pieces and you, you pop down. I mean, if we have a look at the, uh, that one there, if we pull all the panels off and you look at the engine, there doesn't yeah. seem to be a great deal to it. Um, but uh, when when they've looked at uh, do, designing these engines, there, there's there's less less parts in, in the engine, but it's it's also looking towards the future as well. So whilst we're putting diesel in the tank today, who knows what we're gonna be putting in the tanks in the future, whether right. it's gonna be synthetic fuels, hydrogen, whatever. So it's looking at the fuels of the future as well. So it's gonna so give us that. So you future-proof this track. Yeah, try, try, and, try and do right. as much, much, much as anything. So we got to, so we got that new new Core 75 yeah. engine uh, and in there. And this is, is this 7.5 litre? 7.5 7, 7, 7. litre engine, six right. cylinder. Now is this, Genuinely 7.5 litre because yeah, yeah. within the Agco Power family, you've had the 7.4 litre yeah. for there, 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 there is only two carryover parts between that 7.4 and this 7.5 right. litre. Right, so this is genuinely, genuinely a brand spanking yeah. new engine. Yeah. Right, so that's Ge clear. Ge that one genuinely up. <laughs> is, I've got, I've got the presentations, I've got right. the press releases to, to, to prove it. Uh, so it, it, is, it is a brand new engine uh, for that side. What we've then done, if we're if, you know, looking, because just see it through the grill though, is we've taken uh, some, some, some technology then from the, from the 1000 series yeah. with, the, with the cooling concept there. So we've got the, uh, the concentric air system. So it's a push tank. So yeah, so the fan is in front of the cooling pack there. Right. So it's more efficient, it's 40% more efficient than the standard, standard radiator. So what that, what that means is, is obviously we don't have to be as, as large with the cooling pack. Yeah. So it keeps, keeps the bonnet uh, nice, and, nice and small there. But also because that fan is more efficient, we're not having to rob as much power from the engine to drive a fan to cool, to cool right, everything. Got Therefore, we've got more available power for doing, where you need it. Where where we, need it. it. Yeah. we don't want to be wasting it up there. So is is yeah, 40 percent more efficient there. There is there is a fuel saving benefit over the cooling packs we've seen on the 800 series. Uh, for that, so I think the Germans are with their. Um, Oh, in their testing, he was saying over over a thousand operating hours with this cooling system was saving thirteen hundred liters worth of diesel over a thousand operating hours. Really? So it's a big, big, big benefit. Adds up these days yeah, um, for for that front. With the fan, then, as we got, to, we can have then go for go for a reversing fan option as uh, as well with uh, with that one. Right. Um, so the guys that are doing doing mowing or whatever, there we got to, got the, the reversible fan. Uh, for, for and that. while we're around the the front end, is suspension all new or front it, axles or front axle is, is all new. It's, it's it's a beefed up version. Um, and the, again, in in the in the very early testing stages, they did take the front axle off uh, off an 800 series, but with the torque coming through from the transmission completely wrecked it all right so it is an all-new well, that was a fun day, yeah wasn't it? yeah 
So it is, it is an all-new front axle yeah. um, as well in, in there. And then the bit that we can't see is, is, the, is the transmission. Yeah. And uh, so again, it's, it's taking the technology that we've had in the 1000 series and now starting to scale that down. Yeah. And so we've got the, got the new Vario drive transmission. So this is the, uh, this is the TA9, uh, TA190 uh, transmission, so a single range transmission. So we don't have the range one, range two anymore yeah. uh, for that one. But again, it's, it's having that, that, uh, that split drive Right, so, so in terms of concept, it's exactly the same as what was originally introduced on the 1000 yeah. series. So with that single pump driving two, two motors, motors, front axle, yeah. back axle. Right. And then it, so then it, it's, it's looking to see kind of where it's going to get the, the best for its power and grip. Yeah. And so it's dynamically shifting that backwards forwards uh, in there. So there's no four wheel drive button in there in the in the cab anymore. There's there's no range one, range two. Yeah. And then is, is with the 726 and the 728, then we've got the option to go to a 60K transmission. 724 downwards, and it'll be 50K right. as, a, as, as the max got speed it. on, on And the, the transmission that's in this, obviously it's the same concept as what's in the 900, 900 and the 1000, but I assume, is it physically a yeah, bit smaller? Yeah, it's, it's, it's smaller, right. because obviously if we add not that... not just the same No, no, no. because it's, uh, that, that transmission be... would, would be too, too, too big to, to go in there. Uh, so it is uh, just a smaller one, but it, it's... At Fent, we, we always prove the concept and the technology at the higher end yeah. of the horsepower, and then we know we can bring it down rather than go from the lower end and try and scale it up. That's so to speak. it, yeah. Put so back end then, what, what have we got? Going uh, on? So effectively, is, is again the back end is, is a bit of a bit of a hybrid really between the 700 and the 800. Uh, we've got more lift capacity than the uh, than the than the 700. Near enough the same sort of lift capacity as as the, as the 800 uh, in there. We've got the option then of having the, uh, the double acting rear linkage, mm. but what, uh, what they've uh, taken is what we call is the lo load relief control element that we've seen on the front linkage before. So we can carry, shift a bit of weight from the, oh, from the rear yeah. end onto, onto the back of the yeah. tractor. So again, have, a, have a, that weight transfer for the, for the grip on there is on the, on the 728 over there is we got, the, got some of the flat face couplers on, the, on that one as well, um, just to, to kind of highlight the technology being a, being a cleaner uh, coupler, although they got got less flow restriction yeah. um, with uh, with those as well. And how many spools can you have on the back? So ma maximum would be five spools, Mac, right. five five rear spools, and uh, and two front spools on a uh, yeah. on a Profi Profi class. And then cab wise, is that basically the 700 series yeah, cab is, as is, we know it, it now? Yeah, right. it is, is is the same cab frame off the off the 700 series. So from that element inside the cab. There's, there's no real change yeah. uh, going on there, so it is you know, it's home it's a nice home. familiar bit yeah, that, yeah. yeah. And you know, still with the you know, Fent one armrest in there, so that, that, that side has got all the familiarity um, for, uh, for that side. But uh, yeah, it is, it, 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 it is an all new tractor yeah. compared, with, compared with what we have You're not got looking about, are you? <laughs> with that side of it. It's, it's, we, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, uh, we don't do things by ours, really, no, so it's, it's go, go, go all in with it all. Great stuff. Well, Peter, as ever, yeah, thank, pleasure, you very, pleasure. thank you very much. And yeah, we, we look forward to seeing you Yeah, we'll see you soon in the field with it. Yeah, we've got to do that, really. <laughs> You've got, got to have a play in the field. Perfect, nice one. So here we are now on the Kubota stand at Alama 2023. Now, the big news in the Kubota camp is the introduction of Topcon technology for auto steer and guidance, which in the UK is being supported by LH Agro. Now, the young man standing next to me is Rowan Reed. He's part of the sales and support team for LH Agro. Rowan, tell us a little bit about the options which are available for Kubota tractors. So there's quite a few options, uh, just to name a couple, uh, we've got the sort of all singing, all dancing solution here, um, X35 screen, AES25 electric steering wheel, and then our brand new AGS2 receiver, which offers quad constellation, which, yeah, allows for a much better um, acquis acquisition of, yeah, satellites. When using the screen, it's, yeah, all the same across all consoles, so it keeps it very simple for. So we've got continuity, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Now, you've, we, we, this is available on M series tractors, yeah? Yep. Is it just the M series, or is it we bring it into other ranges? No, what that's the nice thing about the Topcon equipment is these electric steering wheels can be fit to yeah any of the tractors that are available. Um, 
we have a spline adapter that will go inside the motor of the electric steering wheel and that can be fit to yeah any of the tractors out there right so now you're saying any of the tractors of course if you've got an m series that's already equipped with auto steer system from the factory yep. then you then this should just plug in correct is that, is that yeah how it works? yeah no absolutely so at that point we'll do away with the electric steering wheel because that's already integrated into the tractor and then you will have screen and receiver which yeah reduces the cost massively um, for the customer for the customer yeah. now this is the full all singing all dancing are there any other available options for those that just might want something yeah, a bit so simpler yeah just next door we've got a smaller more simple system with the light bar and the xd screen this is more for your manual guidance so maybe sticking on the the rtvs or quad bikes um, just offers more of a yeah mapping solution so now this this screen here does it this is it's just sort of like your guidance bars it tells you if you're in the middle or not is that yeah correct? that's it and it will change as you deviate offline so as i steer away here all you'll right see I'll it see, tracks so across so you've got the cross track error in the middle and then the leds either side that will help to notify you of yeah exactly where you are so, so where you've gone wrong in other yeah. words wake up your miles Absolutely. off course so and you yeah. could use this now is this designed for mounting inside the cab or can you mount it do you mount it i know you said you could use it for utvs and other and atvs and stuff yeah but if you were using a tractor for example an older tractor is this something you mount in the cab outside the cab wherever they can go anywhere you like that's the beauty of it they're all ip rated so it can go outdoors um yeah, you can suction cup it to the bonnet if you really wanted right. to. It's, so it's that simple, yeah. it's that nice yep. and it still works on the same receiver yep. system, everything, yeah? All the, all the same, yeah. Brilliant. Well, there you have it. That's the, that's the latest news in terms of guidance from Kubota. Right, ladies and gents, it's always a pleasure when we are with the Mayo Massive that is Mikhail. So I'm joined once again, we've seen him before, it's Mr. Kieran Hughes. So Kieran, I mean, you've got, I mean, you've got one hell of a stand, lots of products going on. You've got quite a few highlights in terms of new developments. This is one of them. We'll yes. start with this one. Talk us through this one. What's this? Obviously uh, it's a round baler. I, round baler, I can yeah. spot that. Yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> uh, this is uh, the fully automatic belt baler, which is the, the V6760. Again, we're listening to the customers. The customers are asking for a high output machine. Um, but a lot of these customers as well, farmers and also contractors, they're now doing a lot of bales in the day. So they wanted to make it easier while they were working long days. So we made a fully automatic machine, which is really the same idea as what the Fusion is, but of course it doesn't have the wrapper on the back. Okay, of it. right. Um, so basically, if he's on a flat field, he can drive up the fields, make a bale, put the lid on the bale, it'll automatically open the door and close the door. Right. Of course, if he's on hilly ground, he can turn that off, which means it's a, a semi-automatic machine. Yeah. So he can press a the button, then the door will open, and of course, the, then the door will physically close. Yeah. Uh, Isobus is standard. Um, also as well, we've done a few nice little changes on it as well. We put the new style indicators telling, to make it easier for the customer when he's making bales, what way to drive. Yeah. To drive. If he's got the perfect wide sward, it sounds. But That's if, he's, it, yeah. if he's on a narrow sward, it'll tell him to drive to the left hand side and the right hand side. Very simply the way it's done, it's done by load cells on the latches. So it's all oh, right. So it's not like inside the chamber. It's actually on the latches. It's right. on the latches. Yeah. So when the pressure comes on the latches, it will automatically will tell them to drive to the left, but also will tell them to drive to the, to the yeah. right. Uh, we used to use sensors and stuff like that, but uh, the weren't as quick as to react. That's where the pressure on the load cells is a lot faster to right. react. So this is a better way of doing it on yeah. the on the latches. On the latches. Right. On the latches on the machine. Uh, also, what we do is we wanted to get the bale out of the chamber quicker. So what we've very simply done is that when the door goes to open, there's a ram on the kicker, and basically it pushes the kicker down. Right. So when your door opens on any other baler, it took the weight of the bale to push the kicker down. Yeah, there isn't that momentary pause of let the bale just like transfer its weight and push the kicker down. It's exactly. So you <laughs> we're going, we're going, <laughs> we're going fast, and we're going that. So yeah. basically, when the door opens, the oil goes to the ram on the kicker, pushes the kicker down, and it gets the bale out quicker. Again, it's all about seconds yeah. on every bale. So on a long day, these, some of these people, farmers as well as contractors, maybe sometimes doing over a thousand bales of straw or silage a day. Yeah. So that's what we've done. Uh, we've also 
uh, uh, there's a camera built on the machine as well, so that if, for example, when you let the bail out, you can see what's going on from behind you as well. Or if you're reversing back and stuff like that, you can also see that as well. Uh, it's very well specced as well, as which typical McHale idea is that we put the big wheels of standard onto it. We have, of course, a, a same as always, the drop down floor, but also now as the rotor is feeding the grass of the strawing, she's pushing the floor down. So you're squashing the grass down more, so you're getting a nicer form of big. Right. But also the augers at the end are cut at an angle, so you get more grass being pushed into the side walls of the chamber. Okay, get so a nice solid shoulder of the bail. A nicer right. shape. Because again, as you know yourself, if you're making silage, less air in the bale, the better the quality will all, always will be. There you go. Um, and does this model replace anything at all? Is this an additional, additional model? Additional model, right. exactly. Right, shall we move on? Because we've got yeah. lots to get through. So let's go talk mowers now, shall we? Yeah, no problem at all. Come on, Simon, let's have a look. So the one we're looking at is it's this, yeah, this, this front one. one here, is it? Yeah, right. the Pro Glide. So this is your new plane disc mower, is it? Yeah. No, no conditioner on no, this? No conditioner at all uh, on the mower. But a, a typical McHale idea as well. We're trying to keep the components in all the mowers the same. So there's the same bed on this mower yeah. that's in your conditioner mower. Um, and again, it's like 95% as full spec. You yeah. still have the quick attach blades on, on the machine as well, so that you're not having to get any spanners or anything like that to change the blades or anything like that. We put the harder steel, greater steel in the skids as well, because a lot of, because you don't have the conditioner, of course, you can drive a lot faster as well. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's in your conditioner. That's the bit that saps the power, isn't it? That's the bit that takes the driving, isn't it? Does, it does, exactly. Yeah. And, and all things you have to remember as well on these mowers as well is that, uh, you know, a lot of people then are cutting more often as well. Mm. So they're doing, they're traveling, they're doing more acres. Sometimes they might be doing the volume of grass, but they're doing a lot more acres. So a lot more acres of a faster forest speed, yeah. more wear, more everything. So that's why we put the heavier skids, heavier bearings, right. heavier everything into it. We did, still took the, the system of the mower conditioner as the way it travels the ground. Uh, so basically, is when the mower is down there, of course, she can go forward and back like that. She also has the side removal, but she also has the twisting movement as well. Right. We also as well, because customers again says for space and room that they wanted the vertical stand. Yeah. So again, what we did was you can unpack it like on the ground if you want, but also you can park it vertical if As you want. As we can see, save As a bit of space. Exactly. Put it in corner of the shed, Put not, it in a... not all over the shed. Exactly, and it's so easy, even if even if you're taking it off during the summer or anything like that, mm. it's just so easy to take on and off when it is sitting in that position. Yeah. Because the front end of it is just perfectly vertical. Yeah. And it's just so simple and easy. But still to have your shafts on it, the star profile PTO shafts on it, uh, all that is standard. That's it, spot on. Right, Simon says, We've got one minute left, so shall we go yep. quick look at Fusion, Fusion 4? Fusion 4, yeah. Again, we've always had the Fusion, well, we started with the Fusion 1, then went to the Fusion 2, yeah. and of course then we went to the Fusion 3, and now we have the Fusion 4. Again, the Fusion 4, uh, this is the plus here, we have the Pro, and we have the Standard. So basically the plus and the Pro is Isobus. So basically you can, again, as what the V6760 is, yeah. you can plug in and, and play, like, you yeah. know? And you can walk through the screen of the tractor. And also, of course, uh, you can walk the cameras, depending on the tractor and what spec of eyes the tractor has, you can walk cameras through the screen as well, if you want as well. Uh, we also, on the Fusion 4 as well, is, is that uh, with the heavier shafts on the rollers, uh, inside of the shaft, they've gone to a 55 mil shaft now as well. Um, the other thing as well, depending on the tractor, if they can read the PTO speed in the eyes of us, it'll automatically drop the floor down if you wanted to do that as well. All right, so if you drop below a certain RPM, it'll help yeah. it out, right? Well, well, how it actually works is very simple. There's a sensor on the roller in the chamber, yeah. and if it sees the roller in the chamber not rotating, it automatically then knows that it's blocked. Yeah. So it automatically will drop the floor down. Do you get a little warning as well? Yeah, it'll, yeah. Warn, it'll do a beep back. Back off sunshine. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you'll hear the PTO uh, touch going off like yeah. so. Uh, so <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> one, one or the other. So it automatically again will drop yeah. the floor down. But also, which is a very clever system because the pressure off the door is in the box there, it'll automatically open the door a little bit yeah. to take the pressure off the chamber. So when you do put on the PTO to take the lump in, uh, there isn't as much pressure on, on, on the shafts yeah, and the gearbox. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it just allows it to go in easier, such or whatever. Also, when on the Fusion 4 now as well, if you actually get to the end of the bale and you want, don't want the knives in, 
it'll automatically will drop the knives out. All right, to give you a full layer. length for the exactly the outer, the outer right. part of it. So, you, so that when you're feeding the bales uh, uh, during the winter, it's not falling apart. Yeah. Now, if he wants to chop straight through all the bale, you can do that. Or if it gets to 90% of the bale, it'll automatically knives out. Yeah, that's it. Knives out. So it puts a layer around the bale. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do now if you want to do that. So there is. Spot on. Well, Kieran, we could stand here and chat all day because you've got lots going on. Yeah. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for your time. No problem. Thank as you very always. much. Yeah. And uh, yeah, as ever, I think we need to see these in the field once we get some sunshine out. Yeah, hopefully. Job is a good one. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Lovely. So, ladies and gents, we continue our coverage of the Lama Shore 2023 event, and we are now on the Chandler's uh, stand, which is showing off a fine array of Massey Ferguson tractors. And from Massey Ferguson, we have Mr. Joe Ford, who is going to tell us a few latest developments, in particular to the 7S range. Because if you go check out Lamp Power TV, we've done lots with the 5S, we've done lots with the 8S and recently over the last 12 months the manufacturers updated quite a bit to the 7s and the 6s so here we go we've got a 7s Thank we've you. got joe ford we've got an expert joe where, where should we start what's uh, what's been happening with the so, 7s the 7s got a a, a revamp uh, about 18 months ago now i suppose it was um it's gone latest stage five engine but it's also gone to the latest design with the, the saber tooth um, bonnet on it revitalized the cab in line with the 8S, so it's gone to this, back to the silver cab, which is traditional with Massey Ferguson. Um, so like I say, stage five engine, up to 210 horsepower in the Dyna VT. So we've got 190 and uh, 190 horsepower and 210 in Dyna VT. Right, so your new top model now, it's a 7S 210, 210 is it? Yeah, right. Dyna VT. Uh, 150 up to um, 180 in Dyna 6 as well. So it's a very popular model. 180 has been one of our top sellers in the UK for a long time. I was going to say, this has been long proper time. bread and butter, the 180, hasn't it? Here, yeah, it has. And is, really it, is that still the case now as well? Or? Yeah, it is. Um, I think we, we see that uh, this is the most popular model out of the, at the top end of the mechanical range, I suppose. Yeah. People, as, as people are progressing more to the Vario style transmission, um, we are pushing a little bit more perhaps to the 190 and 210. Right. Um, but yeah, it's for a, a seeing, nice size tractor for that sort of horsepower. That's something. it. And are you seeing quite a bit of interest with these new sort of higher power 7S models, the, you know, the, the 210 in particular? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the 210 seems to have picked up and gone recently really well. Yeah. Um, the 8S is a bigger chassis, so this one obviously suits us in that it's the more compact chassis, 210 horsepower. It's a proper po pocket rocket in that yeah. sort of sense of the word. That's so it. You've always been good at that, Massey, haven't you? Yeah, proper yeah, pocket yeah, rockets, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. These are available on the bigger tyres now, so you can get these on 42s as well, which is a nice size as well for, for those guys on spuds perhaps, or something like that, where they want that uh, slightly higher, uh, taller tyre. So, yeah. Um, but no, it's had some nice upgrades. It's got the Field Star screen in there as well as the Data 5, so it's got, you know, it's got a bit more technology with it as well. There will be further updates coming, obviously, across the range. Uh, it'll probably go through the larger tractors first before it comes down through into the uh, the 7 Series. So this, this product's certainly here for, for a good while yet. Yeah, yeah, right. Definitely. And can you give us any hints as to what's sort of in the pipeline? Because clearly we've seen you've been busy with, I mean, the A-Test was a big... It yeah. has a big step for you guys. Yeah. Uh, and then following that, you know, the 5S changes, 7S, 6S. Yeah. There's... What are you going to do above the 8S? Is there anything happening? Yeah, well, there? we've got an 8700S at the moment, which yeah. has proven very popular. 9S. I dare say there's something around Agritechnica time. There might be something along those lines. Right. Yeah, but you can probably work that one out. Right. So, yeah. There we go. Uh, and then it'll come back down then, actually. It'll go to the uh, M series then. Uh, where we'll look at rejuvenating that range and probably look at larger horsepowers with a Dyna 4 transmission as oh, well right. in that. So to sort of differentiate between the uh, 5S and the uh, 57M. Yeah. So the M's more. will sort of grow up a little they'll bit. They'll grow up then. a bit more, uh, but that's still a way off yet, but it, they'll, they'll come up a bit higher yeah. in horsepower uh, with the Dyna 4. You can get a larger M series at the moment, but it's only mechanical transmission. Right. So yeah, so there's a bit to do there, uh, but it's a more basic tractor. Um, whereas the 5S is a bit more refined for that horsepower sector, so that's, that's uh, how it works. A lot of tech yeah. packed into a yeah, yeah, relatively yeah, very popular, package. very popular tractors. Yeah. Though there's a load of tractors, as you can see, we've got over there. Well, Joe, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Absolutely You're very welcome. On. Thank you. And we shall continue now with our coverage. Our 
journey around the globe today at LAMA 2023 returns to Europe as we now visit the Netherlands, or more specifically, the Coeco stand here. Now, Coeco is a company which specializes in building high quality slurry machinery in trailed and self-propelled applications. Now, I'm now joined by the managing director of sales, which is Patrick Ruloff, yeah. who's going to tell me a little bit more about the machines we've got on display here today. Mm -hmm. Patrick, thank you very much. Yeah. Tell us about the machine behind us. Yeah, currently we are looking at a uh, class Kaweco combination, combination. So it's a, a class Xerion with a saddle track, 16,000 litre tanker on top and a front unit in the front. We are one of the two licensed partners to build a Xerion, uh, the tanker on the Xerion. There's quite a few of these in the UK now, in various parts, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We sold them all over uh, the UK at the moment, but currently we have about 15 running now. Now with Britain in the AD thing and there's big bio plants all over the place, what makes this machine specifically different from competitors? Yeah, mainly seeing it's its uh, capacity. So uh, it is a machine with a nine or a 12,000 litre pump on the back. Right. So we have a high capacity and the big benefit we have here is we have a complete front unit where we are very versatile to fill the tanker at right, right, right. all positions. So is this a sweep in full 180? Yeah. yeah, we can fill the tanker from all sides, drive up to the uh, end of the field and go over to the road and then uh, suck a nursing tanker empty. I assume the tanker and everything is all built by you. Yes. Is the pump units, are these all your yeah, own pumps? Yeah, everything the entire is... tanker uh, front unit system we built and we mount it on the Xerion class, delivers the Xerion to us and then we mount it on there and then it goes to the dealer and then to the end customer. I know you've sold some tankers in the year, some trail tankers, but you've got this one here today. Yes. Tell us a little bit about this machine <coughs> and, and, and where you, when you tend to go with this in the UK. Yeah, well, we present today the Pro V2 tanker. It's uh, our middle range. So we have the Pro V1 tanker. That's more where we say it's a, a farmer's edition. So right. a lighter tanker, uh, easily built. Then we go to the Pro V2 that we have here. That's more a modular built. So modular means that there are all uh, uh, holes on the side of the tanker where we can attach different options. Right. And then we have the Pro V3 tanker that we are currently engineering new. We will come uh, at the end of this year with a new type. Right. That's really a contractor based machine. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you're saying it, so we, we understand that it, it's a monotype machine, mm -hmm. which obviously makes it easy to adapt on the production line. Yeah. So what sort of options are we looking at that you could do? We're talking additional axles, we're talking different, you know, boom, to, what are we talking about? What yeah, we, we're, to, we're talking about like, let's say, a, a cutting system on the side right. to uh, cut everything that's in the slurry we're talking about suction arm different types that we can fit on uh, different connections on the side we talk about uh, drawbar suspensions and all these things so there's about I would say 60% of the tanker is uh, standard uh, right. based and the rest is all options that the customer can uh, uh, specify like he, like he wants. So, and again, as, we, as I said at the end, you, you do a lot of bespoke work for people. So you are, will take machines and, and people can come to you and say, well, I want it specified like that. Yeah. So for this example, can you, is this, how much bigger do you go? I mean, what size is this one for example? Yeah, well, the Pro V2 tanker comes from eight cubic meters single axle tanker and then uh, by 2,000 liters uh, upwards up to 30,000 liter three axle. Right. That's the biggest one that we built in the Pro V2. And right. then, Pro V3, we go up to uh, 38,000 litres. 38,000 yeah, yeah, litres? that's a massive machine. And, and what about in terms of, what, what, what sort of, what are we talking about booms on the back? What, what, what options do we have there? Yeah, well, when it comes to trailing shoe, like we have here, we work together with Bomec, also right. a Dutch uh, company. Uh, and we go uh, with this machine up to 18 metres, right. working wide. Right. Uh, and then we have all applicators. This one is, uh, uh, um, uh, there is a hitch on the back. You can mount anything you want, like a disc harrow or a grassland and injector. Uh, but everything up to 3,250 kilos max on the back of the tanker. Really? So, so that's, that's quite, an ex quite a bit of weight that you can carry on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's still still a light and compact uh, built machine. So. And now, because it's a, a monotype, mm -hmm. does that essentially mean there's no chassis under it specifically? Yeah, the least? chassis is integrated in the tanker, yep. uh, but there's no separate chassis. So the Pro V3 tanker really has a big, massive, uh, uh, separate chassis um, where there can also be a, a, a bigger hitch attached, up to five tons. Right. Um, but the Pro V2 tanker has an integrated chassis that also makes them a bit lighter uh, uh, and a bit easier to uh, put anything on there on the side. Right, so in terms of suspension and braking, 
Yeah, we use a standard component, so we uh, have FAD axles uh, and either way a boogie suspension, so a, uh, a spring uh, uh, suspension or a hydraulic axle like this uh, uh, tanker has. Right. These are the two options. And these are all quite standard ways of building. So right. the basic steel chassis and the drawbar and the hitch, that for all types, these are the same. Yeah. And uh, with a modular build, we can add uh, the options like we wanted it. And also for a customer, if he wants, uh, he has a tanker of two, three years old, and he wants to attach a suction arm, he can uh, mount it on. So it can be adapted yeah. after. So after it can be retrofitted. Also. Yeah, 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 yeah. Steering axles available on it. Yeah, yeah. This one uh, does have the trail steering axle, but we also have the option for a uh, four steering axle. Then you have the uh, cylinder in the drawbar. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then of course the electronic steering axle. That's also possible. Yeah. Well, that's it, folks. We're we're hearing it hot off the press here at, at Lama 2023. I just want to thank you very, very much for yeah. introducing, us, introducing you yourself for and talking about Coeco. Yeah. And I had to get the pronunciation of that right before <laughs> we went on camera because I had it completely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, no thank problem. you very much. Thank, thank you, much you to you all. Yeah. Have a good show. Have a good show. Right, ladies and gents, we are now on to the K2 stand at uh, Lama 2023. I'm now joined by Mr. Stuart Freeman, who's going to show okay. off uh, two products in particular, because we could be here all day, because you've got a, a fine selection of machines on your stand, indeed, but we'll indeed, focus yeah. on two for now. Yeah. So we'll start with this one, which is, I mean, a go for it, what is this Contract one? dumper, right. 20 tonne capacity, um, based uh, chassis-wise on the curved trailers, right. um, but with a contractor style and built body for the trailer itself. Yeah. Um, they've been in existence for, since 2015, um, but it is new for the show because we've never shown it before. Right. Uh, though the, since that time, the suspensions uh, set, running gear set has been updated. Yeah. Uh, along with the body, which has a 10 mil floor, five mil sides. Uh, so a very substantial uh, section uh, body. Um, and this complements your other, like say, your other dump trailers in the range, which yeah. are either, like your half. Well, we, do a, sort of... we do a far, we do a, uh, a farmer dump as well, right. which is based on the on the curved trailer. So yeah. higher sided, uh, not quite so high capacity. Right. They do they do go to 20 ton, but more in the FYM movement yeah. trailer. Um, and then of course we have a 32 ton uh, parabolic uh, suspension running gear right. uh, on there of uh, an ADR. Um, quality, yeah. So full commercial uh, 420 by 180 brakes. And this is this a pure dump trailer? You're not going to do, you know, for instance, you do see some of these hybrid dump trailers yeah. where they go sticking silage sides or yeah. anything well, like that, or all depends who buys it. Right. And so you um, could. You could, yeah. you could and we have done in the past. Right. I won't lie. Main Sorry. progression would be the mono cylinder, and this uh, it gives us a faster tip compared to the, the uh, twin cylinder. Yeah. Obviously, the twin cylinders are vastly outdated. They've been around since the imperial measurement size. Yeah. As an imperial cylinder, um, so the quality on a single cylinder is that much better. Spot on. Right. Shall we move on to your, so your yeah, next product that's, now? That's, if you have a little CT. wander over. Yeah, so we're on to the, um, the HP 2000, which is the, uh, the hydraulic pusher, right. compactor trailer, yeah. which is, um, though it's uh, been around for some time now. I was going to say, because you've done push trailers for yeah. quite a while now. Yeah. The new part on this is the chassis. We're on uh, BPW hydraulic suspension and drawbar uh, set up, so no springs. And what's the advantages of going full hydraulic sort of suspension right, so all around? The main benefit would be you go from a, the benefits of a parabolic 32 ton is its rigidity. Mm. You don't get the roll. Yeah. So the, the next step would have been to have gone for, for, for improved ride would have been air suspension. Right. So this bridges the gap because air suspension and agriculture don't mix very well at all. Um, so you make the, you get the transition from the, the parabolic suspension to the hydraulic, mm. you get the same stability but the ride of the air suspension. Right, so it's so, a really good halfway yeah. house sort of thing. Uh, and you can adjust heights and so on, Yeah. rather than sort of taking out gudgeon pins and 
and and so on having to change it you just change the ride height to suit your wheel right, so equipment you, you can adjust all this from the tractor yep. draw bar you can yep. adjust that yeah this is a basic system axles so. you can adjust yep. right yeah and can you level it up or anything like that or? yeah on the more advanced systems yeah, yeah. So. and what sort of capacities are you doing this uh, eight, 18, 20 and 25, 25 right. being a triaxle. Yeah. You can get up to 40% more load mm. in the compaction. And what crop would that be in? That would be in mainly grass. All right. Yeah. Right. That much? Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Up to that. So yeah. say you're probably edging more towards that on the 25 ton. Yeah. With the volume of the trailer. But um, yeah. It's Good it's, stuff. It's, right. You just keep going. Well, like I say, we could chat all day on the oil stand yeah, and, and yeah. what you got. I tell but, you a lot more. <laughs> but that will, uh, that's, uh, that's a really good flavour for yeah. now. So, Stuart, okay. thank you very much for your time. Very welcome, Absolutely very welcome. Spot James. On. Yeah, yeah. Nice to speak to you. Right, folks, so we are travelling all over the world at Lama 2023, and we're now landing in South Korea where Kyoto tractors are manufactured. Now, some of you may not know this, but Kyoto have been importing tractors into Europe since 2002. And today they currently have seven ranges in a portfolio, which extends from 21 horsepower up to this little gem, which is now king of the hill in their lineup. And the man to tell us all about it is Mr. Patrick Desmond, who is the general manager for Coyote UK. For Simon. Coyote UK, indeed. indeed. Thank you okay. very much for telling yep. us about it. What can you tell us? Well, this is the UK launch for the HX range. Right. The models start at 90 horsepower, 115. This is the uh, 1201, which is 115, which will boost then up to 125. Right, right, right. It's applied a standard to a high specification. You've got a high visibility cabin, which open, open the door. It's standard with the buddy seat, flat platform, access in and out is uh, nice, nice, simple and easy. Front loader joystick is standard. It's a power shuttle with a splitter. We've got 32 forward, 32 reverse gears. We have uh, two double acting spool valves as standard. We have an option of a, an additional spool. Trailer brakes is, they're optional, but they'll be like a UK standard really. And then we'll have a hydraulic um, automatic trailer hitch made by a Dutch company called Patia for us. You have the uh, screen through the top, so when you're using your loader, your vis visibility remains um, good. It's electric PTO, and one good feature on there is it's automatic PTO, so when you raise an implement up X high, should you desire it to, the PTO will cut off automatically and right, then right. re-engage when you re-engage re it back to Can the you ground. adjust that setting on it? No, it's fixed to a height. You say, now, about, you were saying about a load, and we've got the window in the roof, and obviously, actually, you've got a nice high hood line there, so you can be able to see work at height. Is this a loader-ready tractor from the factory? Yeah, this is a loader-ready tractor. We've got, we've, got the, we've got the joystick, we have the valves underneath the middle of the platform right. ready, ready and waiting. Now, this is a tier five engine in this tractor. Yes. Who builds the engine? Is it a Coyote's engine? It's Coyote's own. Is in, it in, own the, in, in the previous model, the PX, we had Doosan, which was another South Korean company. Yes, sir. But with this model now, it's um, Coyote's own. So all the engines in all the tractors from 21 horsepower up to 125 currently. And then later in the year, we'll go up to 140, but all the engines will be Coyote's own. So, you're, so, uh, so what you're saying is the end of the year, then we're going to have more power from Coyote I yes. again? In, in, a, in a bigger chassis. So it's going to be in a larger, is that going to be a completely separate range? And, and no, addition? no, it will be the HX 140. All oh, right, so it's going to be a bigger tractor, heavier chassis, but still an HX model. Very much so. So now in terms of spec, if we're going around the tractor here, obviously we've got, can you get yes. front linkage with it? Yes, so we're pivoting mud guards. Right, I like that. That's cool. standard. It's a single lift bonnet, front front weights, front loader, uh, front PTO, uh, which is Zeidberg, front linkage are all op standard options basically right, right, that right. I like, yeah. In terms of, oh, sorry, sorry, coming around here um, to the back of the tractor, what are we looking at in terms of it's about spool four, valves and everything yeah, else? Yeah, exactly. So, so it's 4,000 four, 4, kilograms lift at the, at, the, at the rear link arms. Yes, sir. Two double acting spools you'll see there are standard. We have the option of a third one, either with or, or without um, detent. And now, is, is, the, is the back action, the transmission also Coyote? Yes, it's all, all Coyote's so own. Tractor. 
Yes. It's all made yes. by them. Everything, everything is in house. Right. That, that's and that's, and that's, you know, that's part of the reason why Coyote are happy enough to have the five year, 3,000 hour warranty. So the first two years is parts and labour for generally the whole tractor. Right. And then the years three, four, and five is parts and labour for the transmission and the engine main component. Which is a good warranty. That's a good selling yeah, that's point. That's a warranty. Well, I'll tell you what, I think that's quite a nice little tractor. And I didn't know much about Coyote tractor, so I've just learnt something. You so, certainly know a little bit more now, Simon. Thank you very much, Patrick. Right, thanks thank for taking the no, time to tell us all about it. No problem. So, ladies and gents, we continue on the fence, Dan, because Mr. Dan Woodward here, as we all, you know, we've come to know Dan from uh, the, uh, the Katana 650 video. Well, he's got a bigger chopper. As he promised me when we were trying out the 650, he's now got yes. the 850. Well, the new, well, what was the 85, was it? Yes. And yeah. now you've got the 850, so. This, so this is the next generation. Yeah, what's new on the 850? So, like the uh, 650, everything has changed from that pendulum frame backwards. So the roller housing is the same. We've still got six feed rollers on it. Yeah. Um, we go into the drum on there. Oh, just talking about the, the feed roller housing, it's easier to get off because, you, as you saw, it's got its own caster wheels. Yeah. So you can drop it on the floor um, on that and you can pull it away from yourself on that. Um, you've got a new knife sharpening system. So it sharpens as it's going across instead of adjusting either either end. So right. it adjusts as it goes across, sorry. So it constant um, adjustment as it's yeah, right. Yeah, on that. So instead of having that like banana effect on the blades, yeah. you get a level effect. Right. So it makes it more fuel efficient as well for you. Got you. Um, we've taken the emergency stop off the back of the motor. So it makes that motor easier to come off once we're pulling the um, the uh, feed roller motor off, yeah. so you can get the feed rollers off easier. Right. So it's only a five minute job to get the feed rollers off. Is as, it? Yeah, as we saw on the <laughs> 650. And then drum wise, you can have a 20, 28 or a 40 knife drum. Right. And That's then when it. you go the other side of the drum, the cracker is completely different. And so we, instead of having Shall we the have v a slide cracker, round? Yeah. So instead of the V cracker, we now have a horning type cracker. I don't know whether you can see that because the cracker's actually in at the moment. So the. Uh, You've got a slide in there, Simon. Yeah. So the, Have a look uh, in there, sunshine. So your V cracker then, which was originally that was your party piece, it could swing in and yes, out. Yeah. So that's now gone. That that has gone, and now we have the horning type cracker, the roller type cracker on that. But we run a 300 um, diameter rollers in it, 300 mil right. diameter rollers in it um, on that. So we've got a bigger roller in there as well, right? So compared to the competition on that side. So it'll do everything and it'll go right up to shredlage as well. Right, so, so it's, it's in terms of what you had before, it's a bit more flexible in terms yes. of what you can put through it and what you, yep. I suppose, what you want to try and achieve as well. Yep, right. definitely. Got you it. can have uh, three different types of rollers in it. You can have a straight, uh, straight cut teeth and you can have a helical cut as well. Yeah. And then you've got uh, one that is specifically for whole crop if, you're, if you want that uh, for conditions as well. That's it. But we find our RS rollers will do most things for right. us. It will do all process. This one's got the reversible fan in it um, for the engine cooling and it's a variable pitch as well. So it only gives you the cooling to the engine that it actually needs. Right, so saving on that power side. Yep. when it doesn't need to be used. As you can see, the spout is completely different. Um, it's the same as the 650. We probably went through that on the 650 on the video. Yeah. But you can see it'll give you 6.8 meter clearance over a trailer. So there's no, you can get over anything, <laughs> as you can see on that. Um, the only other difference you'll see on this is on the top of the spout, you've got an NRI sensor. So um, that's uh, made for us by OT Phototonics. So that will give you all your moisture, your ash content and everything yeah. on that. And it's a portable sensor, so you can actually use it. Um, take it to the face of the clam, you can use it on your slurry tanker or oh, anything. All right, so it's not just a one trick no. corny on the no, spell there. it's just an isobus connected one, so. Right. So as long as your forager is isobus ready, you can connect that into it and you yeah. away, just use the existing screen. That's cool, yeah. there you go. And then the, the other big difference is from the 85 to the 850, we've now got a Lieber engine. Right, let's go and have a look. So, so you've got so, Lieber now, have you? Yes. Yeah. And so the in the, what oh, was in the 85 before? What did you have so, in that? So we had a V12 MTU. And a this. V12 MTU. Yeah. So how come you went Lieber? Uh, I guess because it fitted in the package, basically. Right. It fitted in the... Uh, it, it, um, because we couldn't carry on to meet uh, stage five with the V12, yeah. the emissions because of the cooling package. This, yeah, 
fit in. This fit the bill. Ball. Yeah. You still have an eco and power mode on this. The engine speed is reduced, yeah. and then the gearbox goes up, and the drum was consistently run at 1150. Yeah. So on that. But a lower yeah. engine RPM. Yeah, lower saving, RPM. Saving your yeah. fuel. So it's the same as we, we saw on the 650. Right. Uh, and that's the same feature on this. Yeah. On that. Done, as ever. Oh, I'll see you another one because he's, Sorry. he's yeah, had a slight incident. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much. Cool stuff. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gents, we carry on what feels like a bit of a globe crossing sort of adventure here at Lama uh, today on day one. Uh, so we're now sort of in the Belgian corner with uh, with Joskin. So I've got Jean-Marc from Hello the there. company. And what Hello. we're going to do, rather than just focus on one product, we're going to do a whistle-stop tour of the stand. We're going to start at one end, and in about five minutes time, we should be down at the other end or back down there. So sounds, that's that's the plan. So Sounds good to me. Jean-Marc, let's start yep. with this, your yep. silo space. That's right. It's the first time that we uh, display the silo, silo space here in the UK. So we took the Lama show because it is an international show for us. And uh, the silo space, what it is, well, we see that uh, the forge harvesters are getting faster and bigger and more output. So we need capacity trailers to transport the silage. So whether it is uh, grass silage or maize silage, so the silo space is a chain floor system. So it means no tipping, which yeah. means then, again, safety. So this one is a twin axle, it's our smallest one, it's a 48 This cube. is the baby. Yeah. This is the baby one. <laughs> yeah, that's the little baby. It's, right. uh, it's actually uh, a 48 cube one without extension, but it is pre-equipped under the cover. You can see where we can put hydraulic extensions to even add more oh, capacity. So you could Yep. Put the Absolutely. sides up, up and down like that. Absolutely. Right. You see the brackets under it. So we put hydraulic uh, rams yeah. with the extensions on the inside, which will push, uh, yeah, the hydraulic rams right. will push up the extensions, which can still be used then still with uh, the, the dual cover. So the cover. Okay, uh, the cover goes with it. Absolutely. Right. So the cover is actually getting compulsory in most countries. Yeah. So we have to cover uh, the load when we are on, on the roads. Yeah. Yeah, so. so when the extensions are up, how yep. much? extra volume capacity you will add have? around seven to nine cube extra on it right. so we are around uh, uh 54 55 uh, cube uh, on with this yeah. one then yes so this is the baby one that's what the baby size, one what other sizes have then you got? we in twin axle we can go to 54 cube uh and then the biggest one will be a 59 cube triple axle right and then of course with extensions we add uh, another yeah, on that one we would add another 10, 10 yeah. cube minimum. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. the silo space, you've had this quite a while now. That's so right. What yes. would be the latest yeah. developments on yeah. this one then? Well, the thing is, um, it's the machine has been sold all over the world, but yeah. it was the look was getting a little bit um, old-fashioned. Right. And uh, one day we told. Another feeling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And Mr. one time we told Mr. Joskin, well, actually, uh, the silo space sales are going down. Um, and one of our customers said, well, you never buy twice the same suit. And uh, Mr. Joskin heard that. He says, gosh, that's right. So we need, we need uh, to, to, to really relook actually uh, the silo space but with then we put more uh, technical uh, features on yeah. it standard so the front wall for instance goes down but when it goes down it also gives that push to the silage okay, to help yeah. the chain floor uh, to get the load unloaded. Right, just sort of set it off. That's yeah, right, yes, okay. indeed. So that is that is standard with it. Cool. And then we also have a standard with hydraulic suspension because the trailer is quite high so we need to play it safe, exactly. uh, yeah. and so the hydraulic uh, the hydraulic suspension is to have a more stable machine uh, at all times on the fields, but as well, of course, on the roads. There we go. So silo space next. Yes. Now we um, well we always go into or open new markets thanks to the slurry tankers. And you always start with this. You're absolutely. The, the slurry tankers is still one of our main businesses. Yeah. And uh, this year we brought a smaller version, so a 2,000 gallon uh, tanker, but also a 4,500. Um, and 
what is important for us is that we can custom build machines, but we also have what we call advantage series. But I will talk about advantage series a little bit further, where we have an advantage series uh, mug spreader uh, on the stand. So here, custom built with a vacuum storm system. Vacuum storm means that it is vacuum for filling and a centrifugal pump under, there is a PTO shaft going under the tanker, a centrifugal pump for emptying the tanker. So we combined the, uh, the best of two worlds. Vacuum is very simple, mm. uh, it's quite cheap, uh, and you can work with all kinds of filling arms uh, or a side gate, etc. With uh, other pumps, this is not necessarily yeah. the case. What size booms can you get on this? Well, on this, on this tanker, we would be maximum 24 meter boom. This is an 18 meter boom uh, with a double folding. Also has section control where we uh, can close sections from 18 to 15 to 12. So to go on 36 meter tram line, 30 meter tram lines or yeah. 24 meter tram lines. And of course, yeah, the, with the 18, the 36. Yeah. Cool stuff, right, tankers covered. Yes. Next. yes. What's next on the hit list? Yeah, something new for the UK or the first time that we display it on, in the UK is the very flex system. The very flex system is where we can regulate hydraulically the pressure on the tines. So we have a hydraulic ram, there are three sections, a central one and then left and right. We put the pressure on the tines and then there is a kind of um, hard, uh, catching hydraulic ram, we call it, mm. a, like a kind of uh, expansion uh, tank that will allow... Well, like an accumulator. Absolutely, right, okay. absolutely. It's a kind of mechanical accumulator. Yeah, okay. That's exactly right. what it is. And so that we have a constant pressure on all the times, uh, on all the times at all times. All the times. times. <laughs> <laughs> easy for you to say. Not easy to say, absolutely. <laughs> if, for instance, this side is quite soft, mm. well, the hydraulic ram will push it in. Then this, these other ones will take it over. Okay. So it's to have a constant pressure at all times. Yeah. Perfect, yeah. good stuff, right. Yeah. Harold, next. What is next on okay. our magical mystery tour? <laughs> yes, then of course we also have our range of mug spreaders with here today a Sirocco and a Tornado. The t Sirocco is a more a farmer's machine, simple machine. Uh, and then the Tornado is more the contractors or the bigger farms machine. Both are advantage series. So what is an advantage series is actually um, a series production where we launch 20, 30, 40 machines of one kind in series. Okay, so like a batch. Absolutely. Yeah, right. So there we can then buy in the tires, the axles uh, and all other components in bigger amounts or bigger numbers. And so uh, reduce the cost, uh, the, the purchasing costs. And also for production, we go we go into, oh, we build them much faster. So again, reduction of cost, production mm. costs. And so we can, um, we can sell them at, at a better price actually. Okay. So that is the Advantage series. Uh, we have Advantage series on livestock trailers, on muck spreaders, on tankers, on trailers, drag cars, out of spaces. Uh, on the tankers, for instance, uh, uh, we fit them with free equipment for all kinds of, for filling arm, for hydraulic mix, or hydraulic top hatch. W with the Advantage series, uh, we have more or less, I think, uh, around 70 Advantage series available. Right. We can also make them for stock. So everything you see, uh, Advantage series, we have them in stock. Yeah. So it's available almost right away. All right. Perfect. And then there is the seven and a half Finally. meter. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Sorry, there's much to show. You've got too much. <laughs> and then we have, uh, yes, um, the twin axle uh, BT Max uh, livestock trailer, which is a seven and a half meter one. This one fully galvanized with uh, a three component synthetic rubber floor. Um, yes, uh, the, it's the first time actually that we bring a twin axle over. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because again, more and more. And uh, hydraulic axles lower absolutely, the body. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm so used to it that I forget to mention that sometimes. It, yeah. <laughs> but it is indeed a, a hydraulic drop down body yeah. for safety reasons, easiness of using it. Yes, and this one is also with the industrial door that slides all over the length of, um, of the, the body. So it's more for an intense use. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so you can absolutely. alter the space between Indeed. front and back. Yeah, and, absolutely, yeah. that's what we can do. And then we can have it with the cover on it, of course. But um, yeah, yeah. So um, that's a little bit everything. That was great. In a few, uh, there's another one, <laughs> but I already talked about that on the other one. So no worries. Well, uh, we'll catch up 
next time more detail see them in the field absolutely I think that'd be a good yep. that'd be a good thing to do so okay sean mark thank you very much for your you're time. very welcome that's thank been you for brilliant coming in. that's been great i'm uh, yeah i'm gonna have a sit down now for a minute after that <laughs> but yeah it's no problem on. at all thank very you welcome. So our final visit today uh, for Lama, day one of Lama 2023, brings us to Manitou, um, another part of our international whirlwind tour. Um, this time with a French company that builds telehandlers to be envied, apparently. Um, with me, I have product specialist David Clark, who's going to go through the latest model from Manitou, which is making its debut here it at Lama 2023. Tell us about it, mate. Well, thank you for coming along. As you say, we have got our brand new model here. This is the MLT850, first UK sort of public viewing right. of, the, of this machine. So this is a pre-production uh, unit that we've got to sort of show customers. Right. It fits a bit of a, a, a range gap for us. Right. Um, we've got four ton models in the range and also a six ton model. So we've now got this new five ton capacity model, which sits in the middle basically. Perfectly, yeah. And yeah. gives that eight meter capacity. Well, the main thing about this machine, it's been designed for heavy duty bucket work to right. go on the front. Right. So if you sort of take a look at the size of the swan neck, the swan the swan neck and, and the size of the boom that we've got on the front, <laughs> it really is made There's for, a lot of for metal heavy in duty lifting There's a lot work. of metal in there, boy. We have the largest or the highest tear out for us on this machine of any Manitou's that we actually produce. So it does mean we can spec the machine with a four and a half cubic meter bucket. Which is a big bucket. Big bucket, but be confident to go into that grain heap and just dig it out first time round and actually get a bucket full really, really easily. Yeah. So the productivity on this machine is really good. So we're aiming this machine at large scale arable, um, grain stores, biogas, anywhere where really you're shifting large amounts of material, material you need to, yeah, to do yeah, really yeah. really quickly as well as that we've got also options for recycling and that type of customers as well and so right so what are we talking of in terms of is it a completely new chassis or is it uses an existing chassis tell us about what makes the machine yeah okay well the, the machine is part of the new ag xl lineup right now that is for us is a complete new chassis in this machine right new boom and obviously you can sort of see the size well, of it which yeah. we put in there yeah, yeah. but really the rest of the machine we actually bring in components from our other models in the range so engine bay and the cab it comes off the new ag xl so it's shared on the four ton and the, and the six ton machine right transmission core also comes from our, our existing range as well right. and again axles 10 ton axles that we also use on the, the six ton machine as well so it's kind of a bit of a hybrid of, of quite a few different components and you have got real nice creature comforts built into that cab frame good easy access plenty of, of comfortable air elements with adjustable armrests and steering and, columns and this and has always been a forte of manager as people have you know we, we've said it before it's there's that, that, that fit and finish that level of refinement is a, is a, is a manager it's a Manitou exactly. Plus, you see, it really is where they go. Exactly. And this is really a, well. This is a machine that somebody will sit in here for four or five hours on a shift, maybe, maybe more, and actually put in a day's work on it. So, creature comforts and, and noise level, you know, we're 69 dBA in terms of noise inside the cab. Transmission wise, Vario, we've CVT. Got our, we've got our V Plus transmission, which is the hydrostatic yeah, yeah. CVT. Yeah. For this type of machine doing the loading work, it's just really well suited. You've got the, the smooth, progressive, but also really high bottom end torque available. And we've also got on here a JSM Auto Power. So as you operate the joystick, the engine RPM is controlled in proportion to what you do. Yeah, I've used that before. That's a really yeah, good feature. So it works well and allows you to get really good productivity with this style of machine. So it's all aimed at productivity on the front end. We've got a couple of different specification levels. So we do uh, premium, elite, and then platinum specs. So platinum is quite a new spec level across the range. That would come standard with auto lube, um, things like LED headlights, extra working lights around the machine, um, and also comfort steer, which is like a quick steer on the steering wheel. Right, yeah. Um, as well as part of that package. But we will have full UK style pickup pitch right, available okay. as an option. Uh, we've tried to homologation, but you'll see on there you've got trailer braking, air trailer brakes. Um, and physically, just look at it, it's just a really nice, heavy duty. It's a, it is a really, it is a big machine. Back end. We use the same engine in this machine and the same engine bay yep. as the rest of the new AG 
XL range, so we've got a Yanmar engine. So it is Yanmar you're using there. Uh, 141 horsepower. Main advantage with this is 600 newton meters of torque available, so plenty of power that we can then also customise to the transmission. Being a hydrostat, we can tweak them, we can play with the torque curves and make sure that transmission is making the best out of that engine available yep. without having to really cane it all the time. You know, so it's, it's, it's optimising the, the, the potential in it. As well as that, you've got just really easy access with a nice big engine bay. Yeah, that's plenty of open. very convenient, isn't it? You've got lots of space in there. You know, you've got plenty of open space for your radiators. We've got drop-down yeah, hatches. A drop-down hatch for the thing there for as well. For yeah, very for useful cleaning out. Um, good old traditional air pre-cleaners on the top of the bonnet. So again, we know we're just using technology that works. Yeah, and and, and helps save air cleaner life. You know, there's, there's yeah, it will fact, work. You know, for years, it will be in a dusty environment. Yeah, it will. Yeah. I noticed as well, we've got your features on here, we've got cameras, I know we've tested the Manitou trucks in the, in the past. Camera systems are really good on these machines, I have to say, it's one of the things that you guys do really well, so you've got camera there. Do you have a camera on the front of the We have a camera on here, the part of the platinum spec is a camera on the head, boom of the, on the head of the boom. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you can see into your trailer or your hopper if you're loading maybe. Which is a really useful feature. Um, and again, that comes automatically on the screen. Um, and as well, because this is a platinum spec, you see LED headlights, we're full auto loop, so we push the grease all the way down the boom, and we grease every single pivot point on the carriage as well. So, so the auto lube greases the carriage and all the pins yep. here as well. So yep. that's, that's interesting. The only don't thing we, we don't do is the prop shafts. Well, you can't, can you? We, we, need, <laughs> we need a little bit of pipe for that, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, tyre-wise, we've got a whole host of different tyres, 500s, 24-inch um, rims, but we've got different tyre styles available for different customers. And if we are looking at maybe a waste, our customer have also got cushion solids um, for puncture proof yeah. as well. In other words, inc increasing the versatility of the machine exactly. in, in different industries. Well, I have to say, thank you very much, Dave, for giving us a, a very nice Good introduction to, to this machine. It's nice to see you too, sir. And that <laughs> concludes our first day at Lama 2023. We hope you've really enjoyed being with us here today. Just wait for part two, and we'll be back tomorrow.